Chapter 8, Thieves, Heretics, and Whores. If this story is to be something resembling my book of these, we must begin at the beginning, at the heart of who I truly am. To do this, you must remember that before I was anything else, I was one of the Edamaru. Contrary to popular belief, not all traveling performers are of the Ru. My troupe was not some poor batch of mummers japing at crossroads for pennies, singing for our suppers. We were court performers, Lord Greyfellows, Greyfellows men. Our arrival in most towns was more of an event than the midwinter pageantry and solenade games rolled together. There were usually at least eight wagons in our troupe and well over two dozen performers, actors and acrobats, musicians and hand mag magicians, jugglers and jesters, my family. My father was a better actor and musician than any you have ever seen. My mother had a natural gift for words. They were both beautiful, with dark hair and easy ladder. They were root down to their bones, and that really is all that needs to be said. Say perhaps that my mother was a noble before she was a trooper. She told me my father had lured her away from a miserable, dreary hell with sweet music and sweeter words. I could only assume she meant three crossings where we went to visit relatives when I was very young once. My parents were never really married, by which I mean they never bothered making their relationship official with any church. I am not embarrassed by the fact that they not bastard Oliodios. They considered themselves married and didn't see much point in announcing it to any government or God. I respect that. In truth, they seemed more content and faithful than many officially married couples I have seen since. Our patron was Baron Greyfalo, and his name opened many doors that would ordinarily be closed to the Edemaru. In return, we wore his colors green and gray and added to his reputation wherever we went. Once a year, we spent two span at his manor, entertaining him and his household. Okay, Dios, bu sayfaya bakıp geliyorum. It was a happy childhood. Growing up in the center of an endless fair, my father would read to me from the great monologues during the long wagon rides between towns. Reciting mostly from memory, his voice would roll down the road for a quarter mile. I remember reading along, coming in on the secondary parts. My father would encourage me to try particularly good sections myself and I learned to love the feel of good words. My mother and I would make up songs together. Other times my parents would act out romantic dialogues while I followed along in the books. They seemed like games at the time. Little did I know how cunning I was being taught. I was a curious child, quick with questions and eager to learn, with acrobats and actors as my teachers, it is little wonder that I never grieve to dread lessons as most children do. The roads were safer in those days, but cautious folk would still travel with our troop for safety's sake. They supplemented my education. I learned an eclectic smattering of commonwealth law from a traveling barrister too drunk or too pompous to realize he was lecturing an eight-year-old. I learned woodcraft from a huntsman named Lacklith who traveled with us for nearly a whole season. I learned the sordid inner workings of the royal court in Modoc from a courtesan, as my father used to say, call a jack a jack, call a spade a spade, but always call a whore a lady. Their lies are hard enough, and it never hurts to be polite. Yüzde yüz katılıyorum şu lafa. Petra smelled vaguely of cinnamon, and at nine years old, I found her fascinating without exactly knowing why. She taught me I should never do anything in private that I didn't want talked about in public, and cautioned me to not talk in my sleep. 
And then there was Ebon T, my first real teacher. Bu karakteri çok seviyorum. He taught me more than all the others said end to end. If not for him, I would never have become the man I am today. I ask that you not hold it against him. He meant well. You'll have to move along, the mayor said. Camp outside town and no one will bother you so long as you don't start any fires or wander off with anything that isn't yours. He gave my father a significant look. Then be on your merry way tomorrow. The performances, they're more trouble than they're worth. Şuraf üstüne bir şey demek istiyorum. I was a curious child, quick with questions and eager to learn. With acrobats and actors as my teachers, it is little wonder that I never grieve to dread lessons as most children do demiş. Şimdi günümüzde biliyor zaten ilkokul, ortaokul, lise bahsetmek bile istemiyor ama YGS, LYS, TEOK, SBS, OSS, ÖSS işte biliyorsunuz onları falan. Yani Allah aşkına sevmemizin imkanı var mı bir şeyleri falan tamam bir şekilde tutmuyor. Bu kitaptaki bahsedilen üslup günümüzde kullanılabilir bir üslup değil. Çünkü günümüzde çok çalışkan olan ne bileyim çok başarılı olan insanlar çok da kolay kolay şey olmuyorlar. Çok yaratıcı insanlar oldukları için çok başarılı olmuş olmuyorlar falan. Bu durumda ne demeye çalışıyorum? Bu kitapta öyle bir ortam var ki, öyle bir zamandaki belki bir şeyler falan. Bir şekilde bilginin değeri var. Hani böyle bilgi Google'a yazıp ha tamam bu anlama geliyormuş da biten bir şey değil. Böyle Wikipedia ya da Google Translate değil böyle olay. Anlatabiliyor muyum? Bir şekilde bir şekilde burada ya, Geç aktör, cercut muhabbeti falan günümüzde de geçerli. Ama bir yandan da değil falan. O kadar böyle kusursuzluk istiyorlar ki çok fazla sayıda insan elenmek zorunda kalıyor. O dönem yok ki böyle bir film çekiliyor. Torrent'in indiriyorsun ne bileyim. İşte interneti düşüyor bir şekilde sinemaya gidiyorsun falan. Hani o dönem iyi oyuncular bütün dünyaya ulaşamıyorlardı. Hani böyle kendi bulundukları coğrafyada gösteri yapıp duruyorlardı falan. Ne demek istiyorum? Şunu demek istiyorum. Kitaptaki şartlarla günümüz şartları kesinlikle çakışmıyorlar. Günümüzde bazı şeyler var. Bir şekilde kitaplarda yazılmayan, Wikipedia ya da Google Translate'de falan da bulunamayan. Ben de onların peşinden gidiyorum. Kendi yaşadığım birkaç deneyim belli başlı anlamlara geliyorlar. Çünkü belli başlı paralellikler var. Ama bunlar hakkında konuşan kesinlikle hiçbir şey yok ortalarda. Kendim bir seviyeye kadar ilerlettim. Kendim düşüne düşüne hesaplaya hesaplaya böyle bazı paralellikleri fark eder fark edediğim ama hala yeterli değil benim için falan. Kendi çözmek istediğim konuları çözmek için yaptığım gösterdiğim çabayla Kvot'un gösterdiği çaba arasında çok fazla paralellik gördüm. Duydum ben ilk okumamda. Ve Kuvvet'un yaşadığı bir iki şey arasında da kendi yaşadığım şeylere benzeyen şeyler gördüm. Of course, aynılarından bahsetmiyorum hani. Onun için bu kitap çok ayrı bir yeri var benim için. Hani bir şekilde buradaki üniversite benim istediğim üniversite falandı böyle. Bir şekilde benim içinde bulunduğum üniversite bir şey söyleyeyim hani bir kere geceliğin işte kampüste yürüyordum. Gece 3-4 falan. Hava böyle o kadar güzeldi ki falan, kampüsün o sessizliği falan. İlk defa o ara fark ettim kampüsün güzel olduğunu. Başka açık açık uf ne kadar güzel bir okul dedim hatırlamıyorum bile. Hani böyle bir şekilde ben o okulun tadını çıkarmam. Hani ben ortam cüccet bir tip falan da değilim. Çünkü param yok. Gayet basit sebebi bu yani. Param yok. Düşünüp geliyorum. Neyse bir şekilde o iyi üniversite, üniversiteyi sevme ihtiyacı, o hisse ihtiyacım vardı. Ve Türkiye'de yalan yok. Boğaziçi'nden daha iyi kampüsü olan, ortamı olan okul yok bence. Hani adı var, ortamı güzel falan biliyorsunuz zaten. Ama yine de tatmin olmamıştı bendeki. O his şanssızlık of course. Benim kendi sorunlarım var, onları da reddetmiyorum falan. Bu kitaptaki bu üniversite muhabbeti, üniversiteye gideceğim, şunu yapacağım, bunu yapacağım falan... Göreceğiniz ilerleyen sayfalarda beni böyle resmen kapıp götürdüydü yani. Çünkü tam olarak ihtiyacım olan şeydi falan. Bu kitaplara böyle çok düştüm hatırlıyorum. Hatta kitaplarda bazı yerler var. Böyle resmen birkaç gün 
o kitaptaki o yerleri sadece oturup düşündüğümü hatırlıyorum böyle. O kadar etkilemişti ki falan beni. Daha çok ilerleyen yerlerde. Ama sonuçta kitabın kendisine başladık. Bundan sonra bir şeyler çok da uzak değil bize diyoruz. Öyle. Bir konuşayım dedim. Yani I never grieve to dread lessons as most children do falan. Sen özel bir çocuksun. Bu bir diyoruz. İkincisi senin zamanında bilgi değerliymiş. Bilgi gidip kanına tırnağına terine cercüt alıyormuşsun. Not today diyoruz. Today özellikle böyle kanıyla, tırnağıyla, teriyle alabileceği bilgilere ulaşmak için özel bir çaba gösterip o bilgilere ulaşabileceği kontekstleri yaratıp o kontekstler üstünde durmadan, duraklamadan yıllarca çabalaya çabalaya ilerlemen gerekiyor <gülüyor> diyelim. Öyle. Hani öyle bir şeyi bulmak gerekiyor en başta falan. İnsanlar bulamıyor. Nasıl bulunacağını bilmiyor. Bulanlar şans eseri buluyor. Şu dünyada her şey şans ya. Gerçekten var ya bunu da şeyde fark ettim. Dalo'da Logan diye bir karakter var. Böyle baya şey bir karakter. Her şey şans diyen ama bir an aşırı taşaklı bir karakter. O karakterin her şey şans deyişinden bir şekilde her şeyin şans olduğunu fark etmeye başladım gibi bir şey oldu. Sonra üstüne düşündüm de düşündüm, düşündüm de düşündüm falan. Ve fark ettim ki cidden öyle. Hani bir şekilde her şey cidden şans böyle. Bir şey hep bir şeyleri hesaplıyorsunuz hep böyle bunu yaparsan böyle olur o zaman sonuç olarak böyle olacaklar falan hesaplıyorsunuz topluyorsunuz çıkarıyorsunuz falan ama gün sonunda çok böyle sürpriz olabiliyor bir şeyler falan öyle o şeyleri şans eseri olma muhabbeti falan ona bir vurgu yapasın geldi okey diyoruz düşünmeye devam. Petra Smed Vagley of Cinnamon demiş ne koktuğunu ben de merak ettim yazıyoruz. Cinnamon. Tarçın, tarçın ayrıca tarçınli, tarçın renkli okey diyoruz. We are licensed, my father said. Pulling out a folded piece of parchment from the inner pocket of his jacket. Charged to perform in effect. The mayor shook his head and made no motion to look at our rid of patron- patronage. It makes for crowd, he said firmly. Last time there was an unholy row during the play. Too much drinking, too much excitement. Folks tore the doors off the public house and smashed up the tables. The hall belongs to the town, you see. The town bears the expense of the repairs. By this time, our vegans were drawing attention. Trip was doing some juggling. Marion and his wife were putting on an impromptu string puppet show. I was watching my father from the back of our wagon. We certainly will not want to offend you or your patron, the mayor said. However, the town can ill afford another evening such as that. As a gesture of goodwill, I am willing to offer you a copper each. Say 20 pennies, simply to be on your way and not make any trouble for us here. Now you have to understand that 20 pennies might be a good bit of money for some little ragamuffin troop living hand to mouth. But for us, it was simply insulting. He should have offered us 40 to play for the evening, free use of the public hall, a good meal, and beds at the inn. Dallas, we would graciously decline, as their beds were no doubt loose, and those in our wagons were not. If my father was surprised or insulted, he did not show it. Pack up, he shooted over one shoulder. Trip tucked his juggling stones into various pockets without so much as a flourish. There was a disappointed chorus from several dozen townsfolk as the puppets stopped mid jabe and were packed away. The mayor looked relieved, brought out his purse, and pulled out two silver pennies. I'll be sure to tell the baron of your generosity, my father said carefully as the mayor laid the pennies into his hand. The mayor froze mid motion. Baron, Baron Gray followed. My father paused, looking for some spark of recognition on the mayor's face. Lord of the Eastern Marshes, Hudumbrin by Tyron, and the Wydecon Hills. My father looked around at the horizon. We are still in the Wydecon Hills, aren't we? Well, yes, the mayor said, but quite similar. Oh, we're in Semelin's Fief. 
at the fire, my father exclaimed, looking around as if just now getting his earrings. Thin gentleman, tidy little beard, he brushed his chin with his fingers. The mayor nodded numbly, charming fellow, lovely singing voice, met him when we were entertaining the baron last midwinter. Okay, Diaz. Okay, sayfaya geri bakmaya başladım. The mayor dur, bu değil. It makes folk rody diyor. Şu rody kelimesine bakmak istiyorum. Rody. Kabadayı, baldırı çıplak zorba, kabadayı, külhan bir dayı, bıçkın delikanlı. Okay diyor. This is firmly. Last time there was an unholy row during the play. Bir de şu rova bakıyorum. Row. Sıra dizi, kavga, tartışma, gürültü, patırtı, kürek çekme, sıralı evleri olan sokak, evlerin hizel çizgisi, sandal gizli, şamat, ağız kavgası, kürek çekmek, sandalda gezmek, kürekle donatmak, kıyameti koparmak, kavgaya karışmak, gürültü yapmak falan. Okay diyoruz. Rov aynen kavga falan geldi aklıma şimdi bakmaya devam. Devam diyoruz. Of course the mayor passed significantly. Might I see your read? I watched as the mayor read it. It took him a little while, as my father had not bothered to mention the majority of the baron's titles, such as the Viscount of Montron and Lord of Trelliston. The upshot was this. It was true that the squire Samuel controlled this little town and all the land around it, but Samuel owed fealty directly to Greyfellow. In more concrete terms, Greyfellow was captain of the ship. Samuel scrapped the planking and saluted him. The mayor refolded the parchment and handed it back to my father. I see, that was all. I remember being stunned when the mayor didn't apologize or offer my father more money. My father paused as well, then continued. The city is your jurisdiction, sir, but we'll perform either way. It will either be here or just outside the city limits. He can't use the public house, the mayor said firmly. I won't have it wrecked again. We can play right here. My father pointed to the market square. It will be enough space, and it keeps everyone right here in town. The mayor hesitated, though I could hardly believe it. We sometimes choose to play on the green because the local buildings weren't big enough. Two of our wagons were built to become stages for just that eventuality. But in my whole 11 years of memory, I could barely count on both hands the times we'd been forced to play the green. We had never played outside the city limits. But we were spared that. The mayor nodded at last and gestured my father closer. I slipped out the back of the wagon and moved close enough to catch the end of what he said. Got feeling fog around here, nothing vulgar or heretical. We had a double handful of trouble with the last troop that came through here. Two fights, folks missing their laundry, and one of Branston's daughters got herself in a family way. I was outraged. I waited for my father to shove the mayor the sharp side of his tongue to explain the difference between mere traveling performers and Edamaru. We didn't steal. We will never let things get so out of control that a bunch of drunks ruined the hall where, where we were playing. But my father did nothing of the sort. He just nodded and walked back to toward our wagon. He gestured and trips started juggling again. The puppets re-emerged from their cases. As he came around the wagon, he saw me standing half hidden beside the horses. I am guessing you heard the whole thing from the look on your face. He said with a wry grin, let it go, my boy. He gets full marks for honesty, if not for grace. He just says out loud what other folk keep in the quiet of their hearts. Why do you think I have everyone stay in pairs when we go about our business in bigger towns? I knew it for the truth. Still, it was a hard pill for a young boy to swallow. Twenty pennies, I said skittingly, as if he were offering us charity. That was the hardest part of growing up at Amaru. We're strangers everywhere. Many folk view us as vagabonds and beggars, while others deem us little more than thieves, heretics, and whores. 
it's hard to be wrongfully accused. But it's worse when the people looking down on you are clothes who have never read a book or traveled more than 20 miles from the place they were born. My father laughed and roughed my hair. Just pity him, my boy. Tomorrow we'll be on our way, but he'll have to keep his own disagreeable company until the day he dies. He's an ignorant bladder's kid, I said bitterly. He lay a firm hand on my shoulder, letting me know I'd said enough. This is what comes of getting too close to Atur, I suppose. Tomorrow we'll head south. Greener pastures, kinder folk, prettier woman. He cupped an ear tower the wagon and nudged me with his elbow. I can hear everything you say, my mother called sweetly from inside. My father grinned and winked at me. So what play are we going to do? I asked my father. Nothing vulgar, mind you. Nothing vulgar, yada. They're got feeling fog in these parts. He looked at me. What would you pick? I gave it a long moment's thought. I'd play something from the bright field cycle, the forging of the path or some such. My father made a face. Not a very good play. I shrugged. They won't know the difference. Besides, it's chock full of tehlu, so no one will complain about it being vulgar. I looked up at the sky. I just hope it doesn't rain on us halfway through. My father looked up at the clouds. It will. Still, there are worse things than playing in the rain. Demish, bakıp geliyorum şu sayfaya. Devam diyorum. Like playing in the rain and getting getting shimmed on the deal, I asked. The mayor hurried up to us, moving at a fast walk. There was a thin sheen of sweat on his forehead and he was puffing a little bit, as if he'd been running. I talked it over with a few members of the council and we decided that it would be quite all right for you to use the public house if you would care to. My father's body language was perfect. It was perfectly clear he was offended but far too polite to say anything. I certainly wouldn't want to put you out. No, no, nobody at all. I insist, in fact. Very well, if you insist. The mayor smiled and hurried away. Well, that's a little better, my father sighed. No need to tighten our belts yet. Half penny a head, that's right. Anyone without a head gets in free. Thank you, sir. Trip was working the door, making sure everyone paid, paid to see the play. Half penny a head. Though by the rosy glow in your lady's cheeks, I should be charging you for a head and a half. Not that it's any of my business, mind you, Falan. Okay, dears. Trip had the quickest tongue of anyone in the troop. Trip did the mi? Trip had the quickest tongue of anyone in the troop, herhalde, which made him the best man for the job of making sure no one tried to fast, fast talk or bully their way inside. Wearing his green and grey gestures motley, Trip could say just about anything and get away with, with it. Hello, mom, no charge for the little one, but if he starts to squawk, you'd best give him the tit quick or take him outside. Trip carried on his unending pattern. That's right, half penny, yes, sir. Empty head still pays full price. Though it was always fun to watch Trip work, most of my attention was on a wagon that had rolled into the other end of town about a quarter hour ago. The mayor had argued with the old man driving it, then stormed off. Now I saw the mayor heading back to the wagon, accompanied by a tall fellow carrying a long cudgel, the constable unless I missed my guess. My curiosity got the best of me, and I made my way toward the wagon, doing my best to stay out of sight. The mayor and the old man were arguing again by the time I got close enough to hear. The constable stood nearby, looking irritated and anxious. Bakıp geliyorum sayfaya. Told you, I don't have a license. I don't need a license. Does a peddler need a license? Does a tinker need a license? You know that tinker, the mayor said. Don't try to pass yourself off as one. 
I'm not trying to pass myself off as anything the old man snap. I'm a tinker and a peddler, and I am more than both. I am an arcanist, you great dithering heap of idiot. My point exactly, the mayor said doggedly. We're God fearing people in this parts. We don't want any meddling with dark things better left alone. We don't want the trouble your kind can bring. My kind, the old man said. What do you know about my kind? There probably hasn't been an arcanist through these parts in 50 years. We like it that way. Just turn around and go back the way you came. Like hell if I'm spending a night in the rain because of your thick head, the old man said hotly. I don't need your permission to rent a room or do business in the street. Now get away from me or I'll show you first and what sort of trouble my kind can be. Fear flashed across the mayor's face before it was overwhelmed by outrage. He gestured over one shoulder at the constable. Then you'll spend a night in jail for vagrancy and threatening behavior. He'll let you on your way in the morning if you learn to keep a civil tongue in your head. The constable advanced on the wagon. His cudgel held cautiously at his side. The old man stood his ground and raised one hand. A deep red light welled up from the front corners of his wagon. That's far enough, he said ominously. Things could get ugly otherwise. After a moment's surprise, I realized the strange light came from a pair of sympathy lamps the old man had mounted on his wagon. I had seen one before in Lord Greyfellow's library. They were brighter than gaslight, steadier than candles or lamps, and lasted nearly forever. They were also terribly expensive. I was willing to bet that no one in this little town had ever heard of them, let alone see one, let alone seen one. The constable stopped in his tracks when the light began to swell. But when nothing else seemed to happen, he set his jaw and kept walking toward the wagon. The old man's expression grew anxious. Now hold on a moment, he said as the red light from the wagon started to fade. We don't want that. Can shut your clapper, you old shit fire, the constable said. He snatched at the arcanist's arm as if he were sticking his hand into an oven. Then, when nothing happened, he smiled and grew more confident. Don't think I will knock you a good one to keep you from working any more of your devilry. Falan diyor, sayfaya bakıp geliyorum. Well done, Tom, the mayor said, radiating relief. Bring him along and we'll send someone back for the wagon. The constable grinned and twisted the old man's arm. The arcanist bent at the base and gasped a short, painful breath. From where I hid, I saw the arcanist's face change from anxious to pain to angry all in a second. I saw his mouth move. A furious gust of wind came out of nowhere. As if a storm had suddenly burst with no warning. The wind struck the old man's wagon and it tipped onto two wheels before slamming back down on the floor. The constable staggered and felt as if he had been struck by the hand of God. Even where I hid nearly 30 feet away, the wind was so strong that I was forced to take a step forward, as if I'd been pushed roughly from behind. Begun, the old man shouted angrily. Trouble me no longer. I will set fire to your blood and fill you with a fear like ice and iron. There was something familiar about his verse, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Falan, hikayelerden birinde duymuş diyoruz. Both the mayor and the constable turned the tail and ran, their eyes wide and wild as startled horses. The wind faded as quickly as it had come. The whole sudden burst couldn't have lasted more than five seconds. As most of the townsfolk were gathered around the public house, I doubted anyone had seen it except for me, the mayor, the constable, and the old man's donkeys who stood placidly in their harness, 
utterly unperturbed. Leave this place clean of your full presence, the Arcanist muttered to himself as he watched them go. By the power of my name, I command it to be so. I finally realized why his verse seemed so familiar. He was quoting lines from the exorcism scene in Dionica that many folk knew that play. The old man turned back to his wagon and began to extemporize. Güzel bir kelimeymiş şuna bir bakalım diyor. Doğaçlama yapmak, hazırlıksız yapmak, doğaçtan söylemek, uyduru vermek. Extemporize. Extemporize. Oğlum, çok güzel kelimeymiş. Okay diyoruz. I'll turn into butter on a summer day. I'll turn into a poet with the soul of a priest. I'll fill you with lemon custard and push you out a window. Spat. Bastards. His irritation seemed to leave him, and he heaved a great weary sigh. Well, that couldn't have gone much worse. The old man muttered as he rubbed at the shoulder of the arm the constable had twisted. Do you think they'll come back with a mop behind them? For a second, I thought the old man was talking to me. Then I realized the truth. He was talking to his donkeys. I don't think so either. He said to them, but I've been wrong before. Let's stay near the age of town and have a look at the last of the odds, shall we? He clambered up into the back of the wagon and came down with a wide bucket and a nearly empty burlap sack. He repented the sack into the bucket and seemed disheartened by the results. He took out a handful for himself before nudging the bucket toward the donkeys with his foot. Don't give me that look, he said to them. It's short rations all around. Besides, you can graze. He petted one donkey while he ate his handful of rough oats, stopping occasionally to spit out a husk falan. Oats derken cidden ot mu yiyor? Şuna bir bakmak istiyorum. O at diyoruz. Yulaf demiş. A cereal plant cultivated chiefly in cool climates and widely used for animal feed as well as human consumption falan. Biz de yiyormuşuz. Okay diyoruz. It struck me as very sad. This old man all alone on the road with no one to talk to but his donkeys. It's hard for us at Amaru, but at least we had each other. This man had no one falan. Ama çok güzel yerlere geldik ama zamanım bitiyor ya. We wandered too far from civilization, boys. The fog that need me don't trust me. And the ones that trust me can't afford me. The old man peered into his purse. We got a penny and a half, so our options are limited. Do we want to be wet tonight or hungry tomorrow? They're not going to do any business, so it will probably be one or the other. Dear Jesus, bitiyor. Benim sıram bitiyor. Okay, diyoruz. Düşünüp geliyorum. Nereden devam edeceğiz? Şuradan devam edeceğiz. 76 diyecek bir şey var mı düşünüp geliyorum. Nope. Kendinize iyi bakın. Görüşürüz.